Greetings everyone, this is Mike Bendy from Federa Guitars. I am a Federa artist and also the director of sales. I'm here to announce today a new series called Mondays with Mike. We're gonna be having tips and tricks, interviews, artist performances, the latest in Federa news. So stay tuned, we can't wait for this to go live. So for today's episode, we're gonna be talking with Dan Balcom, one of our very talented luthiers. To kind of go over a day in the life of what he goes through, what he's thinking about when he's carving these amazing instruments, and just some sneak peek details of the inside world here at Federa. I'm here with Dan Balcom from Federa Guitars. Dan, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good, good to see you. See you too, man. Can you run us through a little bit of your day here at Federa? I do a lot of uh, lumber inventory, glue ups, carving, sanding, uh, paint finishing work. So wearing many hats. Uh, every single one. <laughs> what's, what's some of your favorite steps of creating our instruments? Uh, I'd have to say the carving and the shaping. That's probably the, the most rewarding part because that, after all these steps of you know, uh, constructing them and like getting all the pieces together and then finally sculpting them together into an instrument, uh, a fluid form, you know, and an ergonomic one at that, something that really, you know, fits the body, that's, that's rewarding. Right. I know Vinny likes calling it playable sculpture. Yeah, yeah. Um, every little curve is actually thought of with a specific function in mind. You know, does your ha hand reach all the way? Can you, does it sit against your body just right? Does it sit in your lap and want to slide? Everything, it's all taken into account. Do you play up on the neck and then back at the bridge? All of it, every right. little uh, contour is for the best playability possible. Right, no, nothing's missed no. in the Federa. <laughs> what began your journey? How did you get to Federa guitars? I started actually in high, in high school woodshop class. I had for years, like just played with and modified my own instruments and just did my own thing with them. And then finally in high school, I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it, I'm making one. So I had had my woodshop teacher for two, two years and then the second year is when I decided to do it. He basically said, hey, you wanna do that? Have at it, we'll make Adirondack chairs over there. I ended up over the course of that year building my entire first base. Really? Yeah, and then from there I was thinking, all right, I, uh, I, I want to keep pursuing this. I, I love doing this. I stumbled across Jason on Talkbase of, of all places. I started talking to him and then before I knew it, I was out having an interview and then not long after that, I was moving from Rhode Island, small tiny state, to the big city, which was just crazy. And now here I am seven years later still doing it. That's a wild ride. Yeah, it's been nuts, man. Dan, do you play any instruments? I do. I've been, I've been playing guitar since I was about uh, 14 years old. And I also play bass. I've been playing that for about 10 years now. Something like that. And do you currently own a Federa? Two. I've got uh, an Emperor Standard Special with the redwood top, black limbo body, bird's eye maple fingerboard, maple neck, uh, four band preamp with a ramp, detuner, the works, I've got a tuned E to C and I love that thing. What about the other one? Uh, the other one is a custom Emperor guitar. Okay. Uh, it's Galaxy Black, black with sparkles for those uh, not in the know. Um, with a tortoiseshell pickguard, Indian rosewood fingerboard, Indian rosewood peghead veneer, uh, bird's eye maple neck, lightweight swamp ash body, Fishman Fluence modern pickups, um, and that thing, uh, that thing chugs. <laughs> Creating an instrument from the ground up, what are some of the characteristics that are gonna affect how it sounds or plays that you feel are most important? It, it, it depends on the individual. I mean, you could go for any wide variety of sounds and looks even uh, to achieve what you're looking for, from body wood to fingerboard wood, neck wood, pickup placement. Every little thing affects how the instrument responds, resonates, and 
all that stuff, even to how many frets, that, that changes the length of the neck. So I get a lot of questions through via email and over the phone about what are the, what are the sound differences between, say, bolt-on, we have a dovetail, which is the deluxe, and a neck-through construction, which is the elite. What, what would you say are the differences? Well, feel, number one, that's the biggest thing. Uh, the the bolt-ons, they're better for like if you're going for a slap thing, if you want something with some real extra punch, stuff like that. And at the other end of the spectrum, your, uh, your elite, uh, you have the best sustain and, you know, just even playing across the spectrum. That, I really feel like that's the pinnacle for me. Uh, but again, uh, some people might prefer a dovetail, some people might prefer a bolt-on, you know. I also get a lot of questions, the difference of sound between a double cutaway instrument, like this Monarch 4 Select, compared to a single cutaway, this is a Emperor 2 Elite. With the single cut, you definitely get a, a touch more in the sustain aspect. You have a lot more wood contact in the neck and transferring the energy through the body. Whereas with the, the double cut, uh, it doesn't sustain as much, but it has a little bit more punch. Mm. The more wood that's touching the neck, that allows the sound frequencies to vibrate, transfer better. Right. Yeah, the more contact, the better for that. That's why boltons are actually so sought after for their punch, is because you have a large flat pocket bolting and holding it together. You, have, you get a lot of surface area in there, really transferring energy. Ah. What was the first there you saw, and who was playing it? Ooh. I think it was Vic. I'm pretty sure it was Vic. It was either Vic or it was Moto Fukushima. All right. Yeah. Uh, it was one of those two. Um, I can't remember when it was. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, but I remember seeing him be like, wow, that's a cool bass. That's yeah. a really cool bass. Thank you, Dan, for sharing your experiences and your journey to get us here. Thank you. One thing we're going to be doing is something very exciting called Top of the Week. Look at that. This is something I've never seen before. This is Alder Burl. They're currently on a Imperial single cut template. My favorite. Be sure to visit our Topwood Gallery on Federa.com where you can see this amazing Alder Burl top and many others for you to choose from. Ever want to switch up the look of your current instrument? Maybe have a little contrast, make a little more flow matching the top. We have our wooden pickup covers here. This one is a Buckeye Burl. We can do non-exposed poles, and there's also exposed poles depending on your preference. And for wood pickup covers, we either do, let's say, matching the top wood or matching the fingerboard. As a matter of fact, here's one on the custom of the week. This amazing Emperor 2 Elite. This one features a box Elder Burl top. Has an amazing figured Indian rosewood fingerboard. Has one of my favorite Federa touches, tulips on the 12 to 24 frets. This one features 26 frets. Also, matching wood pickup covers with exposed poles. That's actually from the same piece of wood from the fingerboard. Stay tuned, we're gonna be highlighting different custom builds with ingredients of top woods and colors, tones. It's gonna be really exciting. And we'd like to make a special world premiere announcement. We're gonna be offering wood block inlays. Typically you see Federa's or instruments with mother of pearl or abalone inlays. This is gonna add a whole new dimension and customization. So one of my favorite woodblock inlays is this particular one. This is zebra wood. Say if you put this on a say, Indian rosewood fingerboard, we give you a really nice contrast to make it pop. Feel free to reach out, info at federa.com. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you everybody for tuning in and joining us for our first episode of Mondays with Mike. We'll see you soon, bye-bye. everyone, this is Mike Bendy from Forget... Uh, forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> Do some bloopers. <laughs>
That's a blooper right there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we have a few ones from yeah, before. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> so Dan.